Okay. Ow. Never heard three before. No. Yeah, you made that joke already. It's getting hot in here. It is getting a little hot. It is hot actually here. really hot. Yeah. Alright, let's try and keep this under 10 <sighs> minutes. Not gonna happen, but we're gonna shoot for it. Alright, start All over right. again. Alright. Start over again. From the top. Let me adjust my bra here. Um, is that what I'm let's smelling? go. It's getting hot Smell in here. Smell the bra. Smell the stink. Alright, bullet train. <laughs> I actually really like this one. Uh, it definitely, this is what, David Lynch, this is the guy who did all the John Wicks, and he did Deadpool 2, he did Atomic Blonde, so he has his sh fair share of, like, aesthetic and fight scenes or whatever, but, yeah, I like this one, it definitely had a Tarantino, Guy Ritchie feel where you pull all these random characters in one spot, and they all kind of jump on top of each other, and it's yeah. into the it was, it was like an anthology that all connected, like yeah. like how the other chapters do for like Quentin Tarantino and stuff Yeah, like that. exactly. And yeah. Yeah. I really like that. I thought that I was cool. Like this is, okay, so Atomic Blonde, you say Nobody? I don't know if you did Nobody. And John Wick... I think this one standalone honestly beats all those standalones. At least Atomic Blonde. I kind of like Atomic Blonde, but it was. Mm, I don't it was, know. It I wasn't know. like John Wick One worthy. But I think this one's got too much on the plate to say that it even stays on the same level as those two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. There's just too many well, things moving. First off, this and one hitting each other. This one out of like all the other ones besides maybe Deadpool is very uncharacteristic. Like all those other ones are kind of like serious and kind of gritty in their own way. Like Atomic Blonde is very much serious. It's during like you know the eighties, the Cold, Cold War. War, yeah, Berlin Wall. So it's and all like, taken very very seriously. <clears throat> I really like that setting too. But with with this movie, it felt very <clears throat> so much, and we talked nobody. about it. Like it feels very much like a Deadpool type of movie. Yeah, where it's just like. Except it, it kind of goes. It, the narrative kind of goes back and forth like a Deadpool movie would. Yeah. Um, the humor does. The obviously. humor for sure. Yeah. Uh, plus, just an awesome variety of characters. Yeah, that was my favorite bit. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to tell who the main character is. Obviously, I think it would center more towards Brad Pitt. But you, it's like a, your favorite characters. Like you want to pick your favorite one. It's not necessarily the main character. But my fucking favorite character was the Elder. Where yeah. I got a little serious with him and his family. And it got, you know, a little... That was, like, the only serious bit of the movie. Like, a Russian coming in, taking over this Japanese mafia, and then, like, killing everybody, cleaning house, and then he years later he sets up for his revenge to kill the White Death. And then, yeah, it gets... Uh, he's, like, the only serious part, and he, and he was my favorite, favorite character, for sure. I really liked the twins, who weren't twins. Yeah, I liked the twins, uh, too. Like, it's always awesome to see... Um, uh, what is it? Aaron, Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, dude's awesome in like everything he does. Yeah, I, I know. Enjoy, I enjoy a lot of his work. It's he's a shame we don't get to see him more. But he's yeah, come he's a long awesome. way since Kick Ass. And yeah, uh, yeah, that was the first movie I've seen him, and now he's like in fucking everything, man. Sometimes yeah. you don't even notice he's there until the movie's over. Like Tenet, I didn't know he was in there for the longest time. I was like, hey. yeah, uh, yeah. I liked him, and I liked Lemon, his other his twin brother, and their fucking banter they have together, and the, yeah. The train thing that they were throwing in, it kind of reminded me of the cheeseburger scene in uh, Pulp Fiction a little bit, where they just talk, bring in a random fucking thing to talk about and bleed it in. They just like talk shop, yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I just love their, their banter. Um, this movie also had a lot of cameos of, of these like really famous actors, and they're not in there very often. There's two in mind that are in and out in just a weird little flashback, and that's what that's... Ryan Reynolds and Channing Tatum. Oh, well, I would probably throw Sandra Bullock in there too. Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I mean, I mean she, she was, was, she, was bone, she was more voice than face, but we yeah, got her at the end. Zazzy Beats was whatever. in it. She actually had a fight scene. Yeah, she shows up really quick, and then then she gets it. But it was like, wow, that was pretty quick. Um, like a little too quick. But there was a couple characters that happened to the dude who plays the wolf, who I thought was going to be an interesting character. Yeah. He kind of gets it really cool quick, too. and you're just like, oh shit, okay. Bad well, Bunny. Yeah. He's got such a great walk. Does it work? Does it work? That, that's another thing is the comedy of this is it actually made me laugh and the Deadpool humor never really made me laugh but this did and with Channing Tatum coming in with the random bit or whatever he's got such a great walk and he's like bringing in the you know or, I like the accent. Is this a sex thing? Yeah. 
Is, and then the, he goes, and then, what? No. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I was just kidding. And then Aaron Taylor comes up. He's like, don't fuck him. And he's like, is this the sex thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I loved it. And the old lady shushing everybody. That <laughs> was one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah. like old Karen. <laughs> yeah, I love that. She goes, but they excuse were like, me. He except, goes, you're fucking excused. <laughs> except they were banging all over the fucking train. Right, and right. No one knew it. Definitely, like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, the humor worked for me. The for humor sure. was really good, just because I think everybody's banter worked well with right. each other. Like, right. Nobody who, who knew who they were, but they were throwing stuff at each other that was just great. Right. All the dialogue was awesome, mm-hmm. so their script writing was was definitely on point. Yeah. Um, I also didn't think it got like convoluted in any way. Like, it, it was pretty easy to follow. You know. Right. Right. Good, nice little watch. I was getting a little confused, and then it was because I didn't get all the answers. Then you get all the answers at the end. Yeah, it kind of comes full circle. Uh, Zod shows up too. That was another Zod White Samurai. Uh, yeah, version. where you just you just like holy fuck, man! And then he kind of fills in the gaps with everything with his son being killed and uh, who's hiring who for what and. He brought everybody on the train to fucking kill them for very specific reasons, mainly because his wife. He connects it back to his wife, yeah. Right. And, uh. Yeah. I did. just really like how Brad Pitt, it was like this thing where. I love the bad luck, good luck thing. Yeah. I like how they always, somehow something happened right at the last second, and it was always different, and Brad Pitt turned out to have, like, the most. Luck almost. Well, the villain, the main villain, which I would consider the the chick, uh, what's her name? White Death's daughter. The prince. prince. Yeah, yeah, the prince. And Brad Pitt, where he gets all the bad luck, she gets all the good luck, and then at the very end, everyone kind of gets what they deserve. Yeah. So well, he gets flung all the way through the whole, almost the whole train and lands on that stupid Yeah, stuff and it did up, remind yeah. me of Zazie Beetz's uh, character in Deadpool 2, where she had yeah. all that, and then that scene where she literally lands, lands on the Lands on them, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought all also how he's always trying to get off the damn train and something always yeah and he just keeps him keeps from it getting yeah in he there. just keeps yeah. getting sucked in he's the only one who doesn't really have any motive to be there he just kind of wants to be zen on a mountain somewhere yeah and something just keeps keeping him on the damn train and then he just accepts it and it was it was interesting to see Brad Pitt take on that kind of like goofy character it was a little weird yeah, yeah I was I was gonna say with all the humor in the movie his humor. Like, I was laughing at his bits, but his humor were the ones where his was just kind of reactionary humor. Where Dude, I don't even know you. <laughs> you sound like Shaggy from yeah. Scooby-Doo. You yeah, ever he heard a lot Brad. of dudes, a lot of bros. Like, he, yeah. he's just like this kind of like bumbling goof who's just like, I don't want to be here. I want right. to be like home. I want to be like left alone. Right. And he's just stuck having to deal with everything. Though it's not as funny, I think he's charismatic nonetheless. So I think yeah. it did, overall, it did work. I definitely enjoyed... The each train car was like a different, like set kind of like scene. Yeah. So like they go through like that one like I guess it's whatever the hell the kids are watching that, that right. weird cartoon. It's like all like lit up in like cool neon and stuff. Uh huh. Then they get to like the, the snack car and it's just all snacks. Right. It was cool to see because like the quiet one. Yeah. And like they're they, and they, and they have multiple interactions in all these different cars at all different times. So, like, each scenario is in a different car. It goes a different way. Like, there's a f- badass fight scene or there's just, like, them, you know, talking, their banter. Right. So, that was really cool. The setting was really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. The bullet train was definitely, like, an interesting... Yeah, it reminded me. It's like Orion Express meets fucking Deadpool, kind of. In yeah, a, in a kind bit. of. Um, the fights in here were pretty cool. I mean, yeah. he's the John Wick guy, so he... he Fulfilled that shit. All the hand-to-hand combat yeah. stuff was awesome. That was cool. Uh, that was really cool. Um, there were some crazy bits in it, like uh, the fucking ricochet throw knife to the other dude, uh, to the wolf's chest, where you're just like, "There's the there's the fan the luck part in it, where yeah. it's just like that ah, doesn't really make any sense." But that's the whole point of it. Is I mean, he survived the damn bullet train collision. Crash. They all did. They but all he, survived it. Yeah. Throughout the movie, he just points at something and something falls on him. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I forgot. He just like he just rolls the combination and it perfectly opens. <laughs> it opens up and it opens. It's not what they want. And it's like shit. And and they they run. Yeah. run in real quick. Like <laughs> the his, shit was great. His bad luck. His bad luck was just. It was there, but yeah. like it, he always got out of it, which yeah. was the good luck that he was never seeing. I think they did a lot of good casting choices in here for sure. Mainly Aaron Taylor Johnson and uh, I don't even know that other dude, uh, Brian Henry, Brian uh, Terry Henry. Uh, I know I'm he's starting in, to like him more. I know more he's in now. Atlanta. 
Um, well, he's also he's in, in Internals. Internals. Yeah, yeah, he's in Internals, yeah. He's I really in liked him. Godzilla vs. Kong for like, you know, whatever. And that bit. was another serious bit too where they died and you're just like, why do they call them the twins? But then they grew up together. I don't, were they orphans? What were they? It like, sounds like they were orphans or something. They had yeah. like boarding school kind of clothes on I don't know what was the deal but yeah obviously they've been together forever they grew up together yeah so it did get a little sad and I was thinking I was like wait a minute I thought Lemon had a, the bulletproof vest he talked about the bulletproof vest but then I saw his face was all fucked I was like oh maybe she shot him in the head yeah and then it was looking at the body and his son was like ah and I was like he's gonna wake up and then Lemon fucking goes oh. <laughs> am I in hell yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah he goes I got another brother he goes Oh man, really? He goes, fuck no. And then he fuck tackles no. the dude out of there and lands in the water. There was a lot of great comedic parts in here, a lot of good action and some serious bits in it. So you got a good combination of everything. So I overall like this movie. Very colorful. Guys, yeah. Was, yeah, it was, was very colorful. What would you grade this movie if you could grade it? Like 1 to 10? A's, B's? A's, We to graded F's. like in school here. Oh, well. <laughs> Failed that one. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, w- I would give it. I could give it a good solid like B, B yeah. minus. Like it, it, it had a lot, lot for it, but you know. Yeah, I'll say B. <clears throat> I will actually want to give it an A minus. Oh, I try to hold the press. I'm gonna give it a little bit of higher grade. I'll, I'm better I'll, than y'all. I'll thank you. Oh, you're better than us. You're better than us. <laughs> no, doing, I just we're like professionally. I really liked the combination of literally everything. Like they could probably use a little bit more seriousness, but then it would. I don't know. It, it would take itself it, way too seriously. Yeah, it point. had its own, uh, you know, path that was going on. It so was it definitely, been, it was definitely kind of a mixture of like a perfect storm scenario. Yeah, like everybody worked good on the film, on the team, the crew yeah. did. The film was like right. you know, writing was good, directing was good. So the comedy was there, and it was like I said, it reminded me of the Guy Ritchie, where it's not you know like the Deadpool or the Marvel stupid ass humor, where it's just kind of like I don't know, kids running around, yeah. going, you're fat, and then running off, and everyone in the audience laughs. This was like dialogue heavy, and that made you, you know. Well, the banter just helped. Like yeah. they, they got it. Everybody got at at somebody that they're having a conversation with. Right. At some it point, almost so. seemed Edgar Wrighty. Yeah, but kind of, there was a good especially with the British guys going at it. Yeah, that was the guy which <clears throat> I just fucking liked, and I guess uh, Brad Pitt's was like the other version where he's just kind of like peace, bro, and he goes, oh, whoa, zippity doo, kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah, I liked it. I did too. It was good. I've seen better. Now, oh, whatever. What? Whatever. <laughs> what? What? Look. Bulletproof vest. Terminator. <laughs> All right. That was our review for Bullet Train. Catch you on the next one. See you in the next one. Uh, I... <laughs> what a loser. No. <laughs> <laughs>